talking inclusion in education right now ahead of an upcoming summit. Catherine O'Farrell is a psychologist who works in education and government consultancy. She's been working with the likes of Mabadala, Zaid Organize, Higher Organization, Ernst & Young to promote exactly that inclusion across the Emirates. They've been hosting summits all free to bring teachers together and help them develop their inclusion practices. Um, there's another one coming up in just a few weeks, 30th of January for nursery and early years practitioners. Um, fantastic to have you with us today, Catherine. How are you? Hi, Helen. I'm great. I'm great. Thank you so much for having us on and for really providing a great platform to spread the word about the summits. Can I ask you why this is an area of education that you're really passionate about, Catherine? And why do you think that people listening today, whether they work in education or not, should care about inclusion? Um, OK, well, inclusion, if you if you look at some of the statistics worldwide, less fewer than 10 percent of people who have a disability or a learning deficit can gain meaningful employment. So on the big picture, it's a hugely impactful topic. Personally, I've been working in education for, gosh, I'm giving away my age, about 20 years, and um, more than 20 years. <laughs> and I've been working with families really closely, um, helping them get learning support assistance so their kids can get in entrance into school. And the access to education is really poor if you've got a child with moderate to profound needs. And it's really detrimental to not just the child, but to the whole family. And that in turn is detrimental to society. So it's both a personal endeavour and kind of a bigger picture endeavour as well. I want to talk to you then about some of the obstacles that you think some institutions are coming up against, whether it is attitude or practical. You know, if you could wave a magic wand over nurseries and early years in particular ahead of this summit, what do you think needs to change in order for a place to be truly inclusive for children, Catherine? Certainly awareness of the barriers that are experienced by kids who have individual needs. So people have very uh, common misconceptions around autism, around ADHD, and how, how children can be accommodated. And there's some real barriers there that are very easy to fix, very easy to remove. And the purpose of this summit is to bring practitioners together so that we can discuss what those barriers are. And we've got some really amazing presentations from really broad variety of people like we've got a nutritionist marina dimchenko who's going to tell us about the gut microbiome and how that affects children we've got um some really amazing assistive technology providers like widget and key to enable who have tools that can literally change a child's experience when they enter a classroom and make education fully accessible to them and not just the kids but the teachers i was an early years teacher myself for years and if I had known then what I know now, I think my life would have been a lot easier. And we're hoping that we can do that for practitioners through these summits. As I said, it's a completely free to attend summit. Why is that an important piece in, in the offering? If, if people think about the educational landscape in the UAE, most of us go immediately to the elite premium schools. We think of really amazing providers like RDS or GEMS and some of GEMS more outstanding schools. But not all schools have big budgets. Not all schools have access to these resources. And this is something that we see every day. There are practitioners who simply don't, they can't afford to pay three or 400 dirhams, even a thousand dirhams to attend a summit. So this is our key driver. We want to make it accessible for every teacher, every nursery practitioner. And you're looking at bridging the gap, I guess, between government and, and teachers as well. Why is that such a key part? Why is that collaboration so important when we think about inclusion and the future of inclusion in the UAE? So part of what we've been doing over the last couple of years is working with government entities, um, helping them to design policy because the government have got a big picture, but very often they don't get the opportunity to get on the ground with practitioners. They don't have the space or the time to sit at the table with them. So these summits are a really good space where people can simply talk to people who are trying to implement the policies that are being made in government offices. And it, it sometimes can help shape those policies when they hear, OK, that's not very practical or Equally, that worked really well. We need to expand on it. Can we talk about what does work really well? So I think that's a really important thing. It's not just about 
you know, thinking about what obstacles there are and potentially how to overcome them. But I guess learning from each other, um, what is existing in some nurseries in early years, sharing that knowledge, inspiring each other. And I'm not asking you to kind of pick any favourites and say, you know, Miss, Mr. So-and-so is doing a great job here. But are there any examples that you can share, especially from here in the UAE, that might offer up some inspiration to other facilities, other educational institutions? Absolutely. There, there are so many, it's hard to pick. But if you look at um, some really amazing practitioners, like there's a school in Abu Dhabi, elite private school. I'm happy to mention them. They have got an early years lead. Her name is Agatha Santos, and she's going to present on the day. She is just profoundly inclusive. Her team are really amazing. And it's through really good collaboration. They share practice. They work really well together. Um, equally here in Dubai, we've got um, DPS in Jabal Ali. They've literally just gotten a um, really re re revitalized their whole inclusion department. And it's amazing what they're doing to support kids in classes. So kind of finding these people who are doing an amazing job and showcasing what they're doing on a practical level mm -hmm. is it will help everyone else to learn from them, but not from somebody who's kind of speaking from a government level, but somebody who's working on the ground at the same level, your peer, your colleague. So we're hoping that we can get people networking. We've got a really active um, WhatsApp group where we have practitioners will put on the group something like, I've got a child who has profound behavioral concerns. I don't know what to do. She's doing this and this and this. And within minutes, there will be 10, 20 people with ideas, with advice and guidance, tools, tricks. And that's what we're really hoping to cultivate. And lastly, what is the summit going to look like in terms of the practicality? Um, would you mind kind of explaining the where's the ways of getting involved, the hows as well, Catherine? Absolutely. So if you would like to attend, um, you can pop an email to info at inclusion.com. That's I-N-C-L-U-Z-U-N.com. Um, and we can get you registered. Uh, we've got um, multiple platforms on LinkedIn. You can follow us on LinkedIn. We've got daily updates on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook. Um, on the day, we will have presentations from practitioners on the ground. We'll also have um, experts from Mubadala, uh, from GEMS, from different practitioners, from um, different therapy therapies that are available as well. So it'll be a big mix of both practical and um, kind of expert advice as well. Thank you so, so much. With your permission, if anyone wants to get in touch with the word info, can I share the email address so people can find out more, Catherine? Would that be okay? Yeah, that would be amazing. And we, spaces are limited. Our last three summits, we had almost double the application so please get in quick and wait for um <laughs> well thank you for speaking to us today and obviously all the hard work that's going on behind the scenes ahead of the summit that is taking place then this month Catherine O'Farrell psychologist she works in education and government consultancy committed to inclusion from appropriately inclusion I N C L U Z U N.